A narration found in Sahih Muslim, number 6541, discusses some aspects of creating unity within society. The Holy Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, firstly advised Muslims not to envy each other. This is when a person desires to obtain the very blessing someone else possesses meaning. They desire for the owner to lose the blessing. And it involves disliking the fact that the owner was given the blessing by Allah, the Exalted, instead of them. Some only desire this to occur in their hearts without showing it through their actions or speech. If they dislike their thoughts and feelings, it is hoped that they will not be held accountable for their envy. Some exert efforts through their speech and actions in order to confiscate the blessing from the other person, which is undoubtedly a sin. The worst kind is when a person strives to remove the blessing from the owner, even if the envier does not obtain the blessing. Envy is only lawful when a person does not act on their feelings, dislikes their feelings and instead strives to obtain a similar blessing without the owner losing the blessing they possess. Even though this type is not sinful yet, it is disliked if the envy is over a worldly blessing and only praiseworthy if it involves a religious blessing. For example, the Holy Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, mentioned two examples of the praiseworthy type in a narration found in Sahih Muslim, number 1896. The first is when a person envies the one who acquires and spends lawful wealth in ways pleasing to Allah, the Exalted. The second is when a person envies the one who uses their wisdom and knowledge in the correct way and teaches it to others. The evil type of envy, as mentioned earlier, directly challenges the choice of Allah, the Exalted. The envious person behaves as if Allah, the Exalted, made a mistake giving a particular blessing to someone else instead of them. This is why it is a major sin. In fact, as warned by the Holy Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, in a narration found in Sunan Abu Dawood, number 4903, envy destroys good deeds just like fire consumes wood. An envious Muslim must strive to act on the narration found in Jami Atimiz, number 2515. It advises that a person cannot be a true believer until they love for others what they love for themselves. An envious Muslim should therefore strive to remove this feeling from their heart by showing good character and kindness towards the person they envy, such as praising their good qualities and supplicating for them until their envy becomes love for them. They should continue to fulfill the rights of the person they envy, according to the teachings of Islam. They should learn and act on Islamic knowledge in order to understand that Allah, the Exalted, grants the best thing to each person, and if a particular worldly blessing has not been granted to them, it means that it is better for them not to have it. Chapter 2 Al-Baqarah, verse 216 But perhaps you hate a thing and it is good for you, and perhaps you love a thing and it is bad for you. And Allah knows while you know not. Another thing advised in the main narration quoted at the beginning, is that Muslims should not hate each other. This means one should only dislike something if Allah, the Exalted, dislikes it. This has been described as an aspect of perfecting one's faith in a narration found in Sunan Abu Dawood, number 4681. A Muslim should therefore not dislike things or people according to their own desires. If one dislikes another according to their own desires, they should never allow it to affect their speech or actions, as it is sinful. A Muslim should strive to remove the feeling by treating the other according to the teachings of Islam meaning, with respect and kindness. A Muslim should remember that other people are not perfect, just like they are not perfect. And if others possess a bad characteristic, they will undoubtedly possess good qualities also. Therefore, a Muslim should advise others to abandon their bad characteristics, but continue to love the good qualities they possess. A Muslim must dislike sins but not the person, as a person can always repent to Allah, the Exalted. They must show their dislike of sins within the boundaries of Islam. They should gently advise others against bad things, as being harsh often pushes further away from turning back to Allah, the Exalted. Another point must be made on this topic. A Muslim who follows a particular scholar who advocates a specific belief should not act like a fanatic and believe their scholar is always right thereby hating those who oppose their scholar's opinion. This behavior is not disliking something someone for the sake of Allah, 
the exalted. As long as there is a legitimate difference of opinion amongst the scholars, a Muslim following a particular scholar should respect this and not dislike others who differ from what the scholar they follow believes. The next thing mentioned in the main narration under discussion is that Muslims should not turn away from each other. This means they should not sever ties with other Muslims over worldly issues, thereby refusing to support them according to the teachings of Islam. According to a narration found in Sahih Bukhari, number 6077, it is unlawful for a Muslim to sever ties with another Muslim over a worldly issue for more than three days. In fact, the one who severs ties for more than a year over a worldly issue is considered like the one who has killed another Muslim. This has been warned in a narration found in Sunan Abu Dawood, number 4915. Severing ties with others is only lawful in matters of faith. But even then, a Muslim should continue to advise the other Muslim to sincerely repent and only avoid their company if they refuse to change for the better. They should still support them on lawful things when they are requested to do so, as this act of kindness may inspire them to sincerely repent from their sins. Another thing mentioned in the main narration under discussion is that Muslims are commanded to be like brothers to one another. This is only achievable if they obey the previous advice given in this narration and strive to fulfill their duty towards other Muslims according to the teachings of Islam, such as helping others in matters of good and warning them from evil matters. Chapter 5 al maida verse 2 And cooperate in righteousness and piety, but do not cooperate in sin and aggression. A narration found in Sahih Bukhari, number 1240, advises that a Muslim should fulfill the following rights of other Muslims. They are to return the Islamic greeting of peace, to visit the sick, to take part in their funeral prayers, and to reply to the sneezer who praises Allah, the exalted. A Muslim must learn and fulfill all the rights other people, especially other Muslims, have over them as each person will be asked whether they fulfilled the rights of other people on Judgment Day. One must treat others in a way they wish to be treated by people. Another thing mentioned in the main narration under discussion is that a Muslim should not wrong, forsake or hate another Muslim. The sins a person commits should be hated, but the sinner should not be as they may sincerely repent at any time. The Holy Prophet Muhammad peace and blessings be upon him, has warned in a narration found in Sunan Abu Dawood, number 4884, that whoever humiliates another Muslim Allah, the exalted, will humiliate them. And whoever protects a Muslim from humiliation will be protected by Allah, the exalted. The negative characteristics mentioned in the main narration quoted at the beginning can develop when one adopts pride. According to a narration found in Sahih Muslim, number 265, pride is when one looks down on others in contempt. The proud person sees themselves as perfect while seeing others as imperfect. This prevents them from fulfilling the rights of others and encourages them to dislike others. And pride encourages one to reject the truth when it is presented to them, as it did not come from them and contradicts their desires. Another thing mentioned in the main narration is that true piety is not in one's physical appearance, such as wearing Islamic clothes, but it is an internal characteristic. This internal characteristic manifests outwardly in the form of fulfilling the commands of Allah, the Exalted, refraining from His prohibitions and by facing destiny with patience according to the traditions of the Holy Prophet Muhammad. Peace and blessings be upon him. This ensures one uses the blessings they have been granted in ways pleasing to Allah, the Exalted. This is why the Holy Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, has declared in a narration found in Sahih Muslim, number 4094, that when the spiritual heart is purified the whole body becomes purified, but when the spiritual heart is corrupt the whole body becomes corrupt. It is important to note that Allah, the Exalted, does not judge based on outward appearances such as wealth, but he considers the intentions and actions of people. This is confirmed in a narration found in Sahih Muslim, number 6542. Therefore, a Muslim must strive to adopt internal piety through learning and acting on the teachings of Islam, so that it manifests outwardly in the way they interact with Allah, the Exalted, and the Creation. The next thing mentioned in the main narration under discussion 
is that it is a sin for a Muslim to hate another Muslim. This hatred applies to worldly things and not disliking others for the sake of Allah, the Exalted. In fact, loving and hating for the sake of Allah, the Exalted, is an aspect of perfecting one's faith. This is confirmed in a narration found in Sunan Abu Dawood, number 4681. But even then, a Muslim must show respect to others in all cases and dislike only their sins without actually hating the person. In addition, their dislike must never cause them to act against the teachings of Islam, as this would prove their hatred is based on their own desires and not for the sake of Allah, the Exalted. The root cause of despising others for worldly reasons is pride. It is vital to understand that an atom's worth of pride is enough to take one to hell. This is confirmed in a narration found in Sahih Muslim, number 265. The next thing mentioned in the main narration is that a Muslim's life, property and honor are all sacred. A Muslim must not violate any of these rights. In fact, the Holy Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, has declared in a narration found in Sunan and Nasar, number 4998, that a person cannot be a true Muslim until they protect other people, including non-Muslims, from their harmful speech and actions. And a true believer is the one who keeps their evil away from the lives and property of others. Whoever violates these rights will not be forgiven by Allah, the Exalted, until their victim forgives them first. If they do not, justice will be established on Judgment Day, whereby the good deeds of the oppressor will be given to the victim, and if necessary, the sins of the victim will be given to the oppressor. This may cause the oppressor to be hurled into hell. This is warned in a narration found in Sahih Muslim, number 6579. To conclude, a Muslim should treat others exactly how they want people to treat them. This will lead to much blessings for an individual and create unity within their society. Over 400 free ebooks, audiobooks, infographics, podcasts, and blogs available on our website www.shakepod.com.